Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Cody, and I will be your host for the next hour here on Power Prompts. It is our goal to empower you to power through your art block. Every month, we create a theme, and every week, we have a drawing prompt based around that theme. And this month's theme has been Mermaid. Um, and this today is our final prompt for Mermaid. We actually got an extra week uh, this time around for May because we had five Mondays in um in May, although yesterday for uh, US citizens was Memorial Day, so we kind of bumped it out to the last days of uh, Mar uh, May. Um, so today's prompt is Coral Reef. And if you guys would like to participate, feel free to do so. You can upload your work to Instagram with hashtag Adobe Live Power Prompts. And toward the end of the show, we're going to be looking at some of your awesome entries. Um, and also we might, maybe we'll go back and kind of just like give a little bit of a recap on some of the older entries as well, if we have some time. Um, hey, uh, Rick, welcome everyone. Good to see you guys. Hey, Frank. Hey, Becca, Sam, Shauna. So good to see you. Hi. Uh, Rick says, love that t-shirt. Uh, I have that t-shirt. Yeah, this was uh, last year's, uh, one of last year's uh, Adobe Max t-shirts. Um, I got it. I actually won it in like the Adobe, Adobe Max like registration t-shirt raffle, <laughs> which was pretty cool. So um, yeah, so let's head on over you guys uh, to Fresco and I'll show you guys what we'll be working on. So we kind of had this uh, me and CJ kind of had like this funny uh, thing this morning because I was struggling to figure out what I was going to draw for the stream today. And he said, what if you make a coral reef coral reef? Um, so I decided to make this like little coral coral reef frame um, around a little um, uh, mermaid queen. Um, so we're going to be working on the sketch for that today. Um, and also I wanted to kind of show off uh, liquify a little bit more again, um, because we're going to be kind of like shifting the sketch around and stuff. Um, and I also I'm just kind of like looking at some reference as we go. Uh, CJ says a reef, a reef reef. Yes. <laughs> a coral reef reef. <laughs> Um, and yeah, again, if you guys would like to participate, the hashtag is Adobe Live Power Prompts once again. And uh, yeah, we can go ahead and get into this. Um, so as I was working today, uh, one of the things when I work in Photoshop, I use a lot is uh, the distort tool, um, just because I have a tendency, and I think a lot of artists do have a tendency to kind of like, your sketch kind of like is skewed one way. Um, and my sketches are typically skewed to the right. Maybe it's because I'm left-handed, I'm not sure. But um, if we take a gander at our artwork flipped horizontally, um, always always flip your guys' work. Um, if you don't, like sometimes your sketch, like I said, can end up like the foundation of your work can kind of end up a little bit off because if you're staring at your work for so long, you don't realize that it's wrong like because your brain just gets so used to looking at it as you're working so a great a great tip to kind of refresh your eyes and refresh uh, just the way that your brain looks at your work is to flip your work horizontally um so on fresco all you have to do is click the little uh, gear icon and then you can just do flip horizontally and as I can see, my work is very skewed. Um, <laughs> it looks like it's like leaning over. Um, so in Fresco, we don't have the distort tool yet. I think they're working on uh, free transform tools. However, we do have the liquify tool. So if you go over here, actually for a second, really quick, I am going to turn on um, taps so you guys can see my brush while I'm working. So if you go to input, and then scroll all the way down and then you press show touches. Um, now you guys can see where I'm tapping everywhere. Um, okay, so if we go over here to the, I think it's, is it? No, it's not hold down so much. It's hold down the move tool. So now on the right side here, underneath right here, you can see the little hand that's pushing. We'll use that. And so here is the liquify tool. So basically you can kind of, Actually, it's a little bit difficult to see with the touch on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn that back off. Because the little the little like blue circle kind of covers where I'm working. So let's try that again. Hold down. And we're just going to kind of 
one second. I need to, <laughs> I need to merge all of my sketch layers. <laughs> hey, Annika, welcome. Hey, D, welcome, welcome. How are you doing? Uh, Shauna says, when I draw heads, they skew strangely. I didn't notice it until I did the flip for the first time and realized how weird it was. Oh, I know it's so true. And then you, and then you look at your work after it's flipped and you're like, oh, has it looked like that the whole time I showed the client that sketch? You know? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, and hey, Sam, I don't know if I, I don't know if I uh, said hi to you yet. Welcome you guys. Good to see you. Um, <laughs> CJ says facelift. Yes, we're giving our, our mermaid queen a facelift today. Okay, so uh, let's see. I am going to, I'm just going to go ahead and merge all the layers. I don't really need them, except I'm going to keep my little uh, wreath guide on a separate layer. So that way we can go and hide it later because it's just kind of there. So I know where to put the coral. So let's just go ahead and tap on each layer. And we're just going to go, let's see. Uh, Where'd the merch merch go? Usually it says merge. Oh, here's merge layers in group. Oh, there we go. It's, it was because there was a group underneath it. So I couldn't merge it with the group. So now we can just merge down and merge down. So now all of this is on one layer. And now let's head on back to the liquify tool. And now we can kind of just shift her a little bit over. It's a little bit slower moving than the, like I said, like the skew tool or uh, like the distort. But I mean, it does the job for now until we can get um, like distort and free transform into Fresco, which I am going to be so happy when that eventually comes out. Hey Frank, welcome, good to see you. I think I said hi to everyone like twice. I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> extra highs, extra hellos to everyone. That's looking a little better. She's not looking so, so just like wonky. A little, a little bit of wonky is great. You know, like I, I love going for like that look for my style. Like if you're kind of like, if you want to like lean into that and kind of like make it work for you, like feel free, like be my guest. Um, I kind of like uh, just like the idea that it, it does look a little bit like hand drawn and uh and i feel like it kind of gives it a little bit of character and kind of like like homey feeling you know um like kind of like authentic almost like um like traditional work like it doesn't have to be perfect necessarily you know um okay and then another great thing when you flip your canvas is to flip it back the other way so let's go ahead and do that. And then we can kind of check and see what it looks like that way now. Because sometimes if you're, if you're you know, using the transform tools and stuff um, for a long time, then your brain will get used to seeing it that way. Um, but yeah, she's definitely looking a little better here. And the sketch also doesn't necessarily need to be perfect either, because for me, at least I always go back and, um, edit with color when I go to color things. So um, just to kind of give me an idea of where we're working with. So, or what, what we're working with. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go ahead and, sorry, I bumped the mic. Um, let's go ahead and I'm gonna make a new layer and we can go ahead and start like sketching in some more um, coral pieces. If you guys have any, like, I don't know the names of coral, but if you have any suggestions or maybe like little like, um, like shells, if you have, if you like know any names of shells that you want to put in, I can, um, I can Google what they look like and maybe we can add them in or maybe like starfish or like little sea creatures or something like in the reef. Um, I had these like little fish guys in the background here, but what I was thinking, I was feeling like it kind of takes away from her. What I was thinking is I might um, get rid of these guys. And I had added these little like dots in here just kind of for a little bit of like sea life texture. Um, and I might make some of these guys, these little dots into some fish. So that way it's going a little bit more with the flow of things, you know? It kind of looks a little bit more intentional.
and now it kind of just like it kind of looks like they're like swimming with a school of fish you know conch shells i have i had kind of like a conch ish shell shape down here on the bottom um i'm gonna be working with that a little bit more it doesn't really look like a conch shell all that much <clears throat> fan coral okay i think i think i know what that looks like i'm gonna uh reference uh, the good old Googles here in a second. Searching for sea urchins. Ooh, that could be cool too. Yeah, I like that. And I also didn't really like know what to do with her little shirt. Like I made the collar look kind of like seaweed. And then I have like a little like coral looking uh, crown, um, but I was feeling like not very inspired for her outfit. So if you guys have any ideas for her outfit, feel free to throw them in chat too. Um, Clever says pencil urchin goes with an artistic drawing. Oh, you know what? I actually know what that is. And it's only because of Animal Crossing. <laughs> pencil urchins are so funny looking. Um, okay. Let's go ahead. I'm going to throw up. Um, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm not going to throw up. I'm going to pull up Pinterest. <laughs> um, and I have, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, I have a, a page just kind of like this where I was referencing um, like flat um, like patterns, right? like repeating patterns, which was kind of helping me out a little bit more so than just looking at a photo because it kind of gives you a good idea of silhouette um, of different coral shapes. Like this one, for instance, it just kind of has like the flat silhouette shape, which is really great for kind of replicating that with a sketch. Um, so I felt like that reference was really helpful. And also like, I really liked this one here, this like orange and yellow one um, with like the little schools of fish within the pattern and stuff. I thought that was a really cool idea. Um, and then I also have another page with just um, photos as well, um, which have like all these like little like uh, sea cucumbers, like the tubes and stuff. Um, and it kind of gives an idea like like different types of real life corals too. <clears throat> hey, Potato, welcome. How are you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> Becca says, Animal Crossing taught me everything I know about bugs and fish. It's so, it's so true. It's so true. <laughs> uh, Annika says, can the outfit glow? Whoa, I never would have thought of that. That's such a cool idea. And can we make it purple or pink? Wow. Or, you know, what would be cool too? Like maybe we can make her outfit purple and pink, but we can also like make her hair purple or pink too, like to match. Like that would be cute. Okay. So let's head on back to Fresco here. And I am just going to, let's see. Um, oh, I wanted to look up. Um, sorry, I bumped the mic again, man. <laughs> Um, I am going to look up um, really quick a pencil urchin just on the Googles. <laughs> it's so funny looking. Um, okay, let's go back to Fresco and I will kind of give an idea of a little pencil urchin in there. Okay. Pencil urchin hair accessory. <gasps> Ooh. Okay. Let's let's do that and let's kind of. I had like these little starfish guys in her hair here. Um. Let's get rid of one of them and we can do like a little, a little urchin urchin friend, and she's got just like. Woo. <laughs> uh shauna says oh we could uh could we have a sand dollar oh yeah totally sand dollar oh that yeah sand dollars are so cute let's put 
uh, one little star over here. Oh yeah, the sand dollar. This is why reference is so important, you guys, because I forgot it, like all the details of what a sand dollar really looks like. Let's throw them over here. Um, so it looks like they're kind of like almost a little bit rounded flat on the bottom. Let's throw one like here. Still kind of like trying to go with the shape of the um, frame. So we don't want to go like too far in this way. So I might make it a little bit smaller. Maybe I'll angle it a little bit more. And then they also have like these little, like a little star shape in the middle. And then they also have these little holes in them. And I am going to, it looks kind of weird sideways. So I'm going to go ahead and turn him this way. There we go. It's a little better. Yay. Hey, Bliss, how are you doing? Welcome. Good to see you. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and add in some more coral here. So I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking since I put some, oops, since I put some like long seaweed here on this bottom right side, I might um, mirror that on this top right side. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it a full circle or if I kind of wanted to like let it trail off with some like open-ended seaweed on each side or something. Uh, I don't know, what do you guys think? Or or we could do it a full closed circle um, and we could have it meet in the middle here on the top. Maybe we could do like, I don't know, like a big shell thing up here or something to kind of like crown the, the frame. I don't know. And then like, maybe we'll have some like seaweed here, like I said, to like mirror that. Um, Cause I think we need, we need some balance because um, I don't want this, like this bottom right piece to be the only piece of seaweed. Um, so uh, I think that that like top right might be the best place for it. Um, I think, I think I'm liking the direction of this where it's like coming to, on either side it's like coming like a like almost like a laurel like a greek laurel coming up around and then maybe we'll have it like like open ended on each side almost exactly like like a laurel like this and then the and then the the shell or whatever it is it is in the middle that sounds good okay let's do that Annika says, anything you do is going to look great, Cody. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, let's try that. Also, I wanted to show you guys, I'm going to leave this little, this little shell guy here just in case. Um, so I don't forget that he's supposed to be there. Okay. Um, if you guys are like, man, that seaweed looks really complicated. I don't know how to draw um like a twisting ribbon like that like the idea of drawing a twisting ribbon sounds so complicated but it's really not um here i'll do this on a separate layer so the way that i draw seaweed um and even just ribbons like if i'm doing like a banner or something and i want pieces of the of the banner that's like maybe like falling to look like it's twirled or twisted 
um, it's really easy to just like make a shape like this and then just basically kind of like almost double helix it. Um, so you want to do like the curves opposite each other. So we're going to go out. Uh, we're going to go, sorry, we're going to go in and then out and then in again and then out again. And then for seaweed specifically, of course, it's like a point at the top like that. So like when I go to color it, for instance, and like I, I do multiple different plants like this too. Like, like if I'm drawing a snake plant, for instance, I'll do it this way too, because sometimes those leaves are really twisty. Um, but like, if I go to color it and I want it to be like a little thicker on one side, I'll just kind of like do like a little, a little piece like this here to kind of like add to that, to that thickness. Or we can also, like if we wanted this piece to just simply be like, it's like falling over, we'll just connect those and erase this. And then now that top part is just like falling over like that. So yeah, you have a couple of different options and you can kind of just like study it and like look at just like the natural way that it's kind of like falling falling together and kind of see where you want it to, to where you want it to like lay. Okay. So yeah, like if you look at, if you look at the seaweed that I drew down here, um, I mean, that's exactly what I did. It's, it's just, it's literally two squiggly lines. It's two wavy lines like this. And as I draw it, of course, I was following the curve for this of the frame. And that's exactly why having like just a simple monoline sketch behind just to guide me onto where to put everything for the frame is really helpful. Um, so I know how to like curve the plants. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So since I'm having all of the plants come up, like I've seen some people do it where, you know, like you can do a wreath where it goes all the way around. So like maybe one side is coming up and then the next side is coming down. You can also do that. Um, but since I'm doing both sides coming up, I want um, my seaweed of course to be angled this way. Um, so I think I'm going to start it and I want them, to, I want them to be about the same size too. We could, if we really wanted to save time, we could just go ahead and like, I mean, lasso that, that seaweed that I made before and, um, just copy and paste it, which I mean, maybe we'll just do that. There's no harm in that. I copy and paste things all the time to save time, especially like when you're sketching, like for me, um, the sketch a lot of the time is just kind of like a guide and sometimes I will change things up as I see fit while I'm coloring. Um, so maybe I'll just do that. Maybe I'll just copy and paste it to save some time. Let's see, duplicate selection. And then we can go up here and then we can just flip it and whoop. So now we have our little seaweed here on both sides. It looks nice. I think I like that. Um, and then we can also like, let's say for instance, we could just edit this other piece too. We could just, maybe I'll just change up this one a little bit. So it's not so samey samey. Uh, Becca says, oh, that's helpful. I love the border. Oh, I'm so glad. Good, good, good. Um, okay. Yeah. And then I might like, we could, we could even just change this one up a little bit too. Maybe we'll just do a little bit like that. Like you don't need to change it all that much. Like there. And now actually that's a little bit too straight for my liking. I want to go a little bit more with the curve here. There, something like that. 
Okay, and don't forget to save your work, everyone. Um, I, I know that Fresco, uh, of course, saves to the cloud automatically, um, but I personally <laughs> um, like to just hard, do a hard save every once in a while. Um, if you don't know how to do a hard save, all you have to do is go up here on the top of Fresco, uh, where the little file name is, and uh, just tap it on there, and then you can just tap Save Now and it will just uh, auto save. Or you can also change your file name just by tapping on the file name as well. Um, okay, one second. There we go. <laughs> um, okay, so what's next? Um, what else did, did uh, somebody else suggest anything? Um, let's see. I might add in some starfish as well. Um, da, 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 da. just going back up in the chat. Just want to make sure. Oh, fan coral. That's right. And conch shell. Okay. Excuse me. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and look up fan coral. Ah, yes. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Fan coral is pretty cool. I kind of did like a little bit of it, like just like kind of like twiggy type of coral here um, and on the bottom here. Um, but we could do like a much bigger fan coral, like maybe maybe we can do like some pieces here. Oops. To kind of just like get the uh, general idea of the shape. Like that, maybe, kind of. And then also the, like, so the silhouette, fan coral is pretty cool because the silhouette is not just like a solid shape like this, although this is helping me, again, one of those other sketching guides that helps. Um, basically, the fan coral is just like, it, it almost looks like a, a blood vessel system. Like it's just a bunch of tiny little um, branches that are coming off and coming off and coming off and coming off of each other. And it just like, it's just like a crazy cool design almost. <laughs> uh, Bliss says it's sort of like one of those cameo type photo things on a necklace like um, oh yeah like like it, like from the 1800s like they had like those little brooches that had like a side profile of like a woman um, or like um, in oval frames back then they would do like those those black profile um, like paper cutout or I don't, I actually don't know how they made them back then. Like if it was paper cut out or if it was just like sketched with ink. Um, but yeah, I always thought those are pretty cool. It's just kind of adding in all of these little fine details in here um, to create that that look of fan coral. It almost kind of looks like a, a bug's wing, <laughs> like just with like all of those little interconnected um, kind of like geometric shapes. Something like that, maybe. Hopefully I did it justice. Maybe I'll thicken up this main branch here because it looks like it looks like it has like a kind of like thicker branches like this, and then it kind of like goes out 
and gets a little bit thinner as the branches expand out. Just kind of like any other plant, like a tree does with its branches. Oh, by the way, you guys, I wanted to give you a heads up on the fact that <clears throat> we are actually not going to have power prompts next month. Um, and that is because uh, Adobe Live is actually kind of like going to try experimenting a little bit with the schedule. So things are going to be changing up a little bit for uh, the third quarter this year. Um, however, I will be coming back in July. Um, so uh, I guess it's not really a spoiler alert, but I was, I was going to say um, that um, the prompt list that we were going to do for June, what I was planning on doing for June was called June bug. And we were going to be doing like different like bug related things like drawing different like beetles and uh, like bumblebees and um, butterflies and stuff like that. Uh, but since we're not doing that, we're getting a little bit of uh, time off. Maybe I'll try catching up on my mermaid pieces that I haven't finished. <laughs> Um, but in July, um, I'm leaning on the idea of doing jungle July. So kind of like lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, um, uh, no, but like, uh, maybe like anacondas or like monkeys and like canopy, like maybe like trop tropical birds and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, um, uh, Bliss says fireflies. Oh, that would have been so cute. Like a dark scene with like glowing fireflies. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I said, we'll be coming back in July. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your guys' work then. <laughs> Shauna says, thank you so much for doing a Wizard of Oz reference. Um, I do my best. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to try to fill in um, with some smaller pieces. That's another that's another tip when you're doing these kinds of um, um, like frames or even like if you're trying to do a repeating pattern, this kind of um, logic still applies. Um, you kind of want to, as you're working, put in the big things first and then put in like the medium sized things and then fill in all the empty space with um, like the smallest items. Um, so like, for instance, that's kind of why I started with the seaweed. That's actually down here on the bottom right. That's actually the first thing that I put in because I knew it was going to be taking up the most real estate. And then once we got up to this top left corner, um, I added in the seaweed again, just to make sure that for one, I leave enough space for the bigger, for the bigger items. Um, but also, after it's laid in, then you can kind of see, okay, where's my negative space that's left over that can be um, just kind of like filled in with some filler items. Like, like for instance, like these tiny little fish guys that I'm kind of like putting in here and there. So we can put a couple of guys there and maybe like here. And then I also still want to just kind of like add in some just <clears throat> little dots and stuff just to kind of like add in some of that texture or something just to kind of like I love adding like little hash marks and stuff like that and you know what let's go ahead and like turn off this background um line just so we can kind of get an idea of what it looks like without um and yeah I think I'm I think I'm liking that look so far um, so we just have a little bit of space left. So we have like, um, we have here and maybe like small thing there and possibly another small thing there. Um, maybe I'll, maybe I could do like, maybe like a little, um, uh, maybe like a little starfish right there. That could look cute. Maybe, um, like a little starfish friend. Or maybe we'll do, whoops, maybe we'll do like two starfish friends. Maybe we'll do like a big guy and a little guy. And I personally like drawing my stars without any like guides or anything, just because I think that it adds a little bit of character. If it's 
a little lopsided. I kind of like that. That's just the look that I'm going for. Um, but of course you could also uh, use like a shape tool if you're working in Photoshop, if you want to have like that perfect like star shape and then maybe like you could go back and like round the corners off to kind of make it a little look a little bit more like a starfish. So like that, maybe something like that. And again, going to save my work here. And we're going to erase this arrow and maybe just like erase this gap a little bit here. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I have this space here. And let's see. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go back to my reference really quick. And I did see some really cool, like maybe I'll add in some, um, like uh, there's these um, corals or maybe it's, maybe it's sea cucumbers, but they kind of like are just like these little cylinders that kind of look like this. And they have like a little hole at the top like that. That's kind of cute. Maybe I'll get rid of these fish here and kind of add, we'll add in a third one. And then we can maybe add in the fish back here. Cool, okay. So now we just need uh, just a little bit left, just like a tiny little space to fill. Um, so I'm looking, 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 looking at some reference. I could also do, um, kind of emulate what we, what we just did, but there's also ones that kind of just like are kind of round, kind of circular like this, that also have like a little hole at the top like this. Maybe we could just do something simple like that. And then we'll just go in and fill in, like I said, all of these spaces that kind of just have um, some, some negative space. Of course, all negative space isn't a bad thing. Everyone has kind of their preference on how much negative space they want to fill. I have a tendency to lean towards filling most negative space, although I'm trying to like kind of train myself to be a little bit more okay with negative space. Um, like having, having white space is not a bad thing, you know? Um, but I personally have a tendency to want to fill it. Does, is anyone else like that? Do you feel like, oh, like this just looks so empty and I need to fill it with something. <laughs> is anyone else in, in chat like that, like me? Um, oh, and also I want to render out this seashell guy here a little bit better. Um, let's do that on a separate layer. So we can draw in the bottom part a little bit better and like that. And then I'll just go back and erase this part. Bliss says I'm definitely like that, yeah. Okay. Just kind of fixing this shape here a little bit. <laughs> Rob says, I work with advertisers that believe if they are paying for the space, it must have something in it. Which is funny because like for advertisements and like graphic design, especially like modern graphic design nowadays, the minimal styles are really, really blowing up. Like personally, like I really love um, 
more minimal packaging design. Like if I'm looking in a store, the minimal packaging design is really the one that draws me um, the most. Uh, I, I am such a sucker for <laughs> good package packaging design. Um, and it's funny because the minimal stuff are the ones that have the most empty space. Maybe, maybe it's like psychological and the fact that like, it just like stands out from all the noise of all of the other like really busy packaging. So it's like, oh, this is really simple and sleek and nice. And it just kind of draws you in. Um, but those packages have all kinds of negative space, you know? Okay, so let's draw in just these little lines here to indicate that it's like a little shell. Um, and okay, I think we're about done with the, um, the sketch here. Let's see. Oh, of course I drew. <laughs> yeah, of course I drew all of those other things that I just drew on the wrong layer and I drew it on the the guide layer. So I'm going to go back and uh, just highlight some of these guys and copy paste them so I don't have to deal with drawing around the, um, the guide layer and we can just turn it off. Okay, that's the majority of them. Um, and let's go ahead and duplicate selection and then I'll min um, make that invisible. And then I'll go back to the guide layer and I'll just go ahead and erase these guys. Or actually, you know what? Oh, oh shoot. I drew those little guys on there too. <sighs> Drawing on the wrong layer, you guys. I really need to get in the habit of um, blocking my layers when I'm not using them because man, especially on stream, it's so easy to accidentally do that. Okay, you know what? Instead, I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go in and erase this around it. <laughs> Bliss says we've recruited another worthy member to team wrong layer and CJ says Cody is team captain. <laughs> He's not wrong. Okay. Okay. We're fixing it, you guys. We're fixing it. All's good. <laughs> There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, insulin, uh, is there a way to make the cursor visible? Yes, there is. So I can show you how to do it. And if you would like to know in the future, just in case, um, but if you go to app settings and you go to input and you go down to show touches, um, you can turn that on. The reason that I haven't had it on, I actually was planning on having it on for this stream, but what I noticed specifically for me, I, I've noticed that, I mean, Kyle Webster does it total like draws totally fine with it on. He draws it on his streams, but for me, like drawing with it on, it really, the circle is so big. It really blocks where your cursor really is. So it's hard for me to kind of like visualize where I'm drawing exactly. I'm kind of like blind because you can't see like right where the pencil is being put down on the canvas. Um, so maybe I'll, maybe it'll be easier for me to do it when we're coloring. Um, but right now in the sketch phase, it was, it, it was like, I need to be a little bit more precise with the sketching. But for the coloring, I might be able to um, keep it on now because uh, we have about five minutes left, five or six minutes left for, um, can you lower the opacity to touch circle? I don't think so. I don't think that there's like, there's no options here. Um, if you guys know of any other options, because uh, that would be really helpful um, because I, 
um, I, I haven't ever seen Kyle change the settings on it. Like, or even if like you could change the size of the circle, like if I could just make it like a little bit smaller, that would be cool. Um, uh, can you lower? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Annika says it does for everyone. I don't love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like, it's a cool idea. Like it's a great concept, but like, just like being able to lower, lower the opacity would be really good. And also changing the size of it would be really helpful. Um, but so yeah, the sketch looks great. I'm going to go ahead and, um, condense all of these together. Just stick them in a group and I am going to kind of center it on the canvas a little bit better. I usually like to give my work a little bit of breathing room on either side. Like I don't like to make my artwork like right as big as the canvas. Um, so I'll make it a little bit smaller sometimes. Like when I'm working in Photoshop, I'll use the ruler guides. And a lot of the time I'll give like an inch um, which is quite a big border around the edge, but I feel like personally, I think it looks kind of nice and classy to give like a little bit of, a little bit of space, a little bit of that negative space that we were talking about. Cool. Okay. Let's go ahead and save. <clears throat> um, CJ said it would be nice if it sensed the Apple Pencil and displayed a different icon for it versus fingers. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I was thinking. Like the blue dot is about the size of your fingertips, so it's no problem for normal touch, but it definitely blocks the pencil. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, because the, the pencil tip is really teeny tiny and like you can't you can't see where you're drawing. I have no idea how Kyle Webster draws like <laughs> with, with that on his stream. Like I saw Kyle was the one that did it first. And I was like, oh yeah, I should turn that on for my stream. Um, but I don't think it's gonna work out. <laughs> Kyle is a wizard, he can do everything. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, that's that's the logical response to that. Um, okay, so I am going to go ahead and lower the opacity here. Um, what color do you think I should make her hair? Should we go with like a natural color or should we do like we were talking about like a like a fun color like uh cj says bubblegum pink of course annika said pink earlier um uh maybe we should go with pink that could be fun um we could do we could do a more natural color palette for this or we could kind of like make it crazy like we could like we don't have to make the seaweed green we could make the like we could go with maybe like an orange and pink palette that could be pretty um or like because coral reef is like so bright and colorful um like maybe like orange pinks yellows and maybe like a splash of blue in there could be pretty uh annika says fun colors please okay we we do in the fun colors we do in the fun colors okay new layer let's go ahead i'm going to consult my typical color palette I'm gonna start with those colors and then kind of edit them from there. It's just a little bit easier for me rather than starting from scratch for colors. Um, so like, I'll just grab the color on my palette that's the closest. So I'm gonna grab like kind of like this, this like purple-ish color um, and we're gonna saturate it and we're gonna change the hue here. Let's bring it over and maybe I'll desaturate it just a bit. It's so hard for me to place my pencil in the in the right spot with the with the icon on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. I'm so sorry, you guys. Hopefully, maybe one day we'll get an update in Fresco that could make it a little bit easier. Um, okay, so I am going to be, as Annika likes to say, <laughs> using uh, the Cody Cran pencil. Um, really, in all reality, it is called Conte Cran. It is by um, Kyle T. Webster. It is one of my favorite. Um, coloring uh, brushes uh, for Photoshop and Fresco. Um, and if you guys would like to know how to download Kyle's brushes, all you have to do is go to the brush menu and then go down to, to the bottom to add with the plus symbol and press add more add brushes and then go to discover new brushes and it will pop up a menu of Kyle's uh, wonderful, wonderful packs. There's like thousands of brushes. I'm not kidding. There's like two over like 2000 brushes in here, which is crazy. Um, because all of these brushes are free if you have an Adobe CC sub. 
Um, and I really love his brushes. I'm going to be using the Conte Crayon today and maybe we'll be using a little bit of his watercolor brushes as well. Um, and oh my gosh, it's, I talked my way through my last five minutes, you guys. What? <laughs> There's no time. There's no time to color. Wow. I talked all of that up and now we have to go look at the amazing, we get to look at the amazing community entries. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're Here, I'll, I'll do one little bit of color here. We'll color in a little bit just because I have to color a little bit because I, I was talking so much. I can't believe I talked my way through that. Let's color in a little bit of this reef here. <laughs> Um, but yes, I use uh, Kyle Webster's Conte Crayon Brush and also um, his uh, Natural Edge Painter Brush. Um, the Conte Crayon can be found in his uh, Mega Pack, and then um, the Natural Edge Painter Brush can be found in his Watercolor Pack. And maybe we'll do like one of these little starfish pink. And of course, we'll go back and do her hair pink as well. Um, but I just like, I kind of love like these just like pops of color here. That's really fun. <laughs> she technically colored. The requirement is fulfilled. Indeed. I did it, you guys. I used the pink color and I did the colors. Okay. We'll just color in this guy and then we will be on our way to look at the amazing community entries. <laughs> That's how it happens. Time zips by so fast. It's so true. Okay, you guys, let's hop on over to the Instagrams and we can look at the amazing community entries. Um, so we have had quite a few repeat artists throughout um, Mermaid. Um, and I love specifically this artist here on either end. Um, I think they've done every single mermaid piece. Um, and I thought their work is so cute. It's got this like little, almost like little swamp character, kind of like a swamp, like fish. He's got like little like webbed fingers. Um, so cute. The, the comment on this one says fish friends. Once I had the clown idea, I was set. Uh, so they did like the sea anemone as like almost like a little clown um wig with like the little fish coming out of the hair oh it's so cute i love the color palette too um just like the bright orange like goes so well with the pastels like you wouldn't think that it would but they did such a great job executing this and it's just so fun and unique um and then also their character uh for the swamp mermaid um was just so cool too it's got like she she's got like a uh, like a cattail and like a lotus flower and like uh, like reeds and stuff in the hair design and um, yeah just like the textures on the eyes are really cool too um, and again like that the webbed fingers and just yeah just like very very cool like the the detail lines on the fin the tail fin are ex again executed super super well. Thank you so much, Doodlebug, for all of your amazing entries. You, should, you guys should go check out their work. Um, like, look at all of these amazing mermaids um, throughout the month of May. Oh my gosh, so much cute work. Um, so yeah, go check them out. They only have 41 followers. Oh my gosh, you guys, go follow her. <laughs> um, okay, let's go back. And also, yes, Fabulous Kitty has done some, some amazing entries as well. I love, love, love their mermaids and the colors. Oh, that's so funny. They did a uh, pink, blue and orange as well for their for their color palette. That's kind of for their like coral color palette. That's what we were going to go for, you guys. That's so funny. I love it. <laughs> the, the description on this one says, here's my last mermaid for my mermaid. Her shirt is currently the height of mermaid fashion. Yes, I love the collar on this. It's so um, unique and fun. Like it almost like, it looks like a runway model, but it's like like sea inspired and it kind of like looks like a shell. Um, it's very cute. Um, and then she also has um, like some fish like swimming around her tail. And I also like how the, the fin, uh, the t tail fin has like transparency and you can see the fish behind it. Um, CJ says currently, <laughs> good pun, yes. 
Um, and also the hair texture is really beautiful as well. Um, so yeah, thank you, Fabulous Kitty. Also go give Fabulous Kitty a follow. They only had 12 followers, you guys. Go go follow them. They've done so many um, fun entries for Mermaid. And I think, I think they used to do entries for um, uh, power prompts, uh, other power prompts entries and also draw this in your style, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then also, oh, there's another cute little one for, it's like a little snail mermaid. Um, this one was for uh, the fish friends prompt and they have like little flower crowns and stuff. Oh, so adorable. <laughs> and then I also wanted to go back down to the bottom here, you guys, and just kind of like re-look at some of these older entries because uh, just in case you guys didn't see our other um uh, our other mermaids, some of my favorite ones, like for instance, this one um, from the space theme was really beautiful. I love this texture. Um, the tail is so beautiful. The the fish have so much character and stuff. Um, and then also this one was one of my favorites as well. Um, thank you guys so much for participating in Power Proms this month. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, like I said, we were going to not be doing power prompts in June, but we are coming back for July. Um, so I look forward to coming back to you guys. And um, thank you all so much for doing artwork with us and uh, stay creative. And I'll see you guys next month. Bye, everyone.